Look who's being such a good boy. He knows we're going to go to the park, right? You're going to go to the dog park and go on a car ride? He knows what's going on, so he's staying out of the pool. Maybe giving him too much credit there. I don't know, but I told him we're going to go to the dog park and go to a nursery. That he had to stay dry. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's early. Gotta get a lot done today or over the next several days. I haven't even edited last Saturday's vlog yet, but I finished it last night. I think there will be a garden tour probably between that video and this video, ideally, because I didn't do one in March, technically, so an April garden tour seems like something I should do. But there are some things that I got to get done first. Like, look at, I mean, there, there's so much stuff going on out here. I'll get to that later. First, dog park. Then I have to go to one of the local nurseries here, Sugar Creek Gardens. They have one of those services that more nurseries are starting to have where during the winter you can pre-order your stuff. You can do online orders, like pre-orders, and then they get them and you can come pick them up. And they sent me an email just, I don't know, yesterday or the day before saying, hey, your stuff's ready. And it's supposed to rain for like the next five or six days after today. So today's the day. Gonna go get the stuff and then try and get a few things planted. I'd say I definitely need to make a dent with all the plants over here. It's mostly the perennials that I would like to go ahead and get in the ground. I would like to handle everything over here in this corner. <laughs> would have helped if I zoomed out when I started saying that. Get these gingers potted up. Those go on each side of the dolphins. That massive declutter put me into more of a headspace where I realized, hey, these are things I need to get things improved, like new hose equipment and shelves and some other things in the garage to organize with. But that's the, besides the point. A whole bunch of perennials over here that I'd like to do something with as well. I just, I need to make a dent. I'm not feeling great about how the pile is going here. It hasn't been really nice enough to do a lot of planting yet. So that's why a lot of stuff's just sitting here and I haven't had time, honestly, to get much of it done in the month of April, but I think, was it May by the time this video comes out? I have no idea, maybe. I'll feel a lot better if I've gotten a chunk taken out of this, especially since we're about to go to a nursery and go pick up more plants to bring back here. They're pretty cool plants too. So probably should have minimized my talking in the beginning of the video because people probably just want to see the nursery and what I pick up. I doubt y'all even care about the planting stuff. I'll do that towards the end of the video. If I even get to it, depends. Weather is going to be kind of iffy here. Okay, you ready, Turbs? You gotta go get dressed. You can't go out like that. You gotta get your leash on. Let's go. Let's go, kid. We can go on a car ride. Let's go to the park. Let's see your friends. Good boy. Dog park time. You know the rules. Sit down. Have a seat. You gotta get dressed, Turbo. All right. Come on. Good boy. Uh, where are you going? Have a seat. Gotta wait. Good boy. Well, shoot, Turbo. I don't think anybody's here. You wanna go see your friends? I don't think they're here. Place is empty. Poor Turbo. You don't know what to do. Where is everybody? Where is everybody? He's okay. He's a dog. There's lots of stuff to sniff. He's getting so much more independent. It used to be... Oh, is he... Yep, he's going to do that. Okay. It used to be when I would bring him here, he had to be, like, by my side within 15 feet. And if I'd walk away, he'd start, like, screeching and crying. Oh, not anymore. He's starting to get more independent. Don't tear it up too much, Turbo. Oh, while Turbo runs around and sniffs things, you guys want a dog park tour? I... There it is. You're welcome. Usually what I do if nobody else is here, I just walk the perimeter a few times, get some steps in. That allows him time to do his sniffing thing because he won't play with me until he's sniffed everything unless there are other dogs here. So there's no point in tossing him any balls or not until he's done all of his sniffing. There's a tree, nice tree, maple, and uh, one of those. Thought it was an oak. It never really looked at its leaves before. It's definitely not an oak. Not seen any honeysuckle. That's good. I expected this area to be full of honeysuckle. There's some yarrow down there. That's fine. Don't you love when yarrow starts popping up and doing its wildflower thing? I think that was yarrow. I just saw the yellow flowers and didn't really take a close look at it. They have a cute waterfall. Little splash pad built in for the dogs. Lots of benches. They got a lot of amenities for a dog park. Well, that was uneventful. Oh, where are you going? We're going this way. Come on over here. <laughs> we fix that for you, Turbo. Well, their dogs showed up, but they, but they were the kind that like to bite Turbo in the face when he tries to play with them. Burnt some of his energy up. Well, let's go to the nursery, pick up some plants, and get back to the house and have some fun planting things, maybe? I don't know. Someone's about to get a pupka. And grab a green tea and go get some plants. There we go. Living his best life. Right on top of my shirt, too. That's great. I can leave any awkward stains. There's a fun angle. I like that elbow action. I'm sure that was all very muffled, too. Now, what am I supposed to do with this, Turbo? Lots of tropicals and tons of roses. They are stocked. This is nothing. There are a lot more up here around the corner. Tons of mandevillas. 
Some fun looking colors too. Bromeliads, there's a bunch of bananas around the corner, tons of elephant ears. See, look at all those roses. It's got the David Austins and gardenias. Oh, these are beautiful. Is that a dahlia? I think so. What kind? I don't know. Grab the wrong tag. Dalgria sunrise. That's very pretty. Dark foliage. Ibram flowers. And beautiful variegated hibiscus. Look at the foliage on this one. Salsa dancer. Lots of color. These are cool. Look at them. They're Sinaras. Sinara. I don't know how you say it. Type of carton. See the tag? Really nice foliage on those. That's right, you probably can't hear anything I'm saying. I said the foliage is nice. Silvery blue, artichokey shape to them because it's relative of the artichoke. They have some nice <laughs> bulletins. Um, this is not gonna work, Turbo. What is that? You know better. Oh, that is a beautiful hosta. Look at how many colors are inside of those leaves. Shadowland Miss America. That is beautiful. I really like that. I think that says 19 by. 55? I don't know. This is hard to read. I'm not sure. It's hard to read. It looks like a big one. It's in the nice big container. Probably one of the larger ones, I would imagine. Look at the columbine. Ooh. Acerums. Beautiful gingers. Great ground covers for the shade. Look at that foliage. Aren't those beautiful? Great plant for the dry shade or even just semi-moist conditions. They're pretty versatile. Really tough plants. I never see these in containers this big for sale ever. Usually they're well, even smaller than that. You gotta wait a few years to get some size on them. These are massive. Lots and lots and lots. Trees and shrubs. Did some rearranging this year. They managed to pack a lot more in here. Things are looking nice. I was hoping to find some limelight primes, but not seeing them. I haven't really seen them anywhere except for the three that I picked up for a different project. They're not for me. I have to use them for someone else. And that's okay. These are nice looking standards. Look how round and full those are. I was just saying I wanted to find a limelight prime in one of the larger standards, and according to their website, they weren't selling them. At Proven Winners, they were saying that they only came in the number three or three and a half foot, not the five, I don't remember what the description was, but it wasn't, whatever the large size was, they said no. Oh, it's so exciting. Should I look around and see if there's an, look at this one, that one's even bigger. Um, dang, I was just going to be picking up my order. I mean, obviously other things are happening here too. This is going to get complicated. I don't know if I'm able to film here anymore because now i got to figure out this situation and the dog. The dog with the wagon, not ideal. He's very, very, very good with a cart. The wagon, not so much. So I'm walking, I got the wagon behind me and one arm, the one's holding the camera right now, and I got the dog in front of me. It's just too much. Not really enjoying it all that much. So the rest of this is probably gonna be some quick shots of little things, especially now that I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here. I'm so excited. How many should I get? Should I get like five? Uh, I really only need one. What if I were to replace the strawberry vanillas that I have in the containers with the limelight primes? That's something to think about, isn't it? Not right now, but it's just, you know, something I can process. I'm gonna grab one because I have a spot where I know that I need to plant it. And then now that I know I can get them in these larger sizes, and the price isn't that bad either. At least it wasn't on that one, so I assume the other one's probably not so bad either. This is exciting. Look at that, more redemptions and feral masks and polar greens. There's the tropicals. Got a good selection in here. Want some ties? Lots of little babies. They have good color on them too. Mangaves. I know y'all love your mangaves and some stingrays. Those are fun. I like the stingrays. This is an interesting day. Yeah, I'm referring to you, Turbo. You were very interesting today. Kind of moody, actually. Very moody. Not sure what his deal was. He had to go back to the car while I was at the nursery because. Uh, there was someone there that he just wasn't vibing with. I've never had that problem with him before. I take him places all the time. There was someone there that he just did not like. He wasn't acting like he was going to bite the dude, but he kept growling at him. And I was like, what is your deal? Like this person who's all the way practically on the other side of the nursery, he was just staring him down. He had no love for that stranger. I'm wondering if it's because he was wearing camo. <laughs> you know, that, that Maybe that's far-fetched. I don't know. But you just like tally up all the events of the day. I'm someone where if my dog growls at someone that actually very much bothers me outside of the controlled environment here at home, I want him to growl at people. He can go ahead and attack people for all I care. He's a good guard dog at home, but not out in the world when 
he's on a leash with me. He's supposed to know that he's secure with me and that I'm in charge. So it was just odd because he's never done that before. You know, he had been to the dog park where there was a good amount of activity. Only one other dog showed up that wouldn't play with him. They kept biting him in the face. And we go to this nursery where there's a busy road right next to it. There's a lot of noise. And just a minute or so before this happened, there was some woman screaming from the other side of the street saying, no, no. She was chasing her dog. Her dog had run out her front door and was running towards the street. The nursery is kind of in a residential area. Like it's not, but it is. There's houses all around it and then businesses on the other side of it. And you couldn't really see that because there are plants everywhere. There's just, you know, a fence line full of plants right at our nursery, but I could see through it enough that I could tell what was going on. I don't know if he could. He could just hear someone screaming, no, 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 and then there was a dog barking, and then there were cars being really loud. A person wearing camo emerged from outside of a bunch of shrubbery, and I think that that may have just been too much for Turbo's precious little brain, and it freaked him out. It's a very cool day. It was like 49, 50, maybe, while we were there in Cloudy, so he got to hang out in the car the rest of the time. I don't think he minded that. Windows rolled down, of course. Gladiolas. Gladiolas. This is, I'm starting the part where I'm going to show you all the stuff I got. A lot of these are a surprise to me because I placed this order in like December, maybe January. So it was exciting to see what was getting thrown onto my cart. These are just gladiola bulbs. Blue Isle gladiolas. I love gladiolas. I don't know why I haven't been planting them over the last few years. There's something I always had growing up. But I say gladiola, and though I'm pretty sure it's gladiolas. But that's just, I don't know, it's the way I was brought up. Iowa and Missouri people, they say, usually say gladiola. It's a purple gladiola. There's not much else to say about it than I thought it looked really nice. It's going to be the case for a lot of stuff here. Ten bulbs of those. And then something I picked up while I was there. This is the Ombre Pink Mix <laughs> Calibrac, which um, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure why I bought it. <laughs> what happened? I don't use you my Calibrax. But it just, it happened. I saw the tag and I was like, well, those are beautiful. Hopefully these will get bigger and start to look like that. Again, I don't use you my Calibrax because it gets hot and rainy and then they rot and die. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen. I had been hoping to find some Mayan Sunset crazy tunias at the nurseries. I bought two at Greenscape when I first went there back in March. I haven't seen them for sale since. I just figured they would get more because they're such an awesome new petunia and they're very popular, but so far no luck, but still early in the season. They could still show up. I four of those. I'll show you. Here's the crazy tunia right here. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful petunia. Mayan sunset is the name on this one. Gorgeous plant. Absolutely beautiful petunia. Isn't it? I love it. I have two. I want four. And I have two that I ordered from Burpee, apparently, in the wintertime when I was doing plant orders. I don't know why I did that. Burpee doesn't deliver their plants till like late May. I usually have my ball rolling with planting by then, so late May is typically too late to get plants in the mail. But hey, there'll be two more coming in case I don't find any more. This is just an assorted petunia. It just says Flower Shower Series Petunia. I really prefer a specific name on my petunias, but I saw it and I was like, well, that might be the crazy tunia, right? I mean, doesn't that look like the same thing? I can't tell a difference, can you? Because it's hard to say when the one on the right only has one and a half flowers on it, but the others are crumpled up, and even that one's not looking all that great. The foliage looks pretty similar. I mean, I guess it has to, right, because they're both petunias, but whatever the case, it looks similar enough that I got two more. Where's the other one? Yeah, see? So I grabbed two of them. They weren't labeled, so I really can't say, but I would say that that's probably it, right? I don't see a lot of petunias that look like this one. So what else would it, that's gotta be it. Oh, and I also picked up this beautiful Fancy Feller Sunburst. That's just like their branding on the plant. This Lismachia. Excellent trailer, sun to part shape. You probably wanna see the plant, not the picture on the tag, right? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? What a wonderful trailer. Kind of like a Peperomia and a Creeping Jenny had a baby. I like it. I don't know much about this one. It just says Fancy Fillers Sunburst. Not very specific with the name, so I'll do some reading up on that one. Find out more about it. Bold, glossy leaves. The stem on it's pretty sturdy. When I see a leaf like this, I expect a stem that's going to be kind of bendable and breakable, like on a begonia. You know, a lot of begonias just barely touch when boom, they snap. That's what that looked like it would be, but I picked it up and was like, oh, this is actually pretty sturdy. So I went and I got one. Well, maybe not that sturdy. <laughs> just found this laying in the cart. Hey, it looks like something that will root easily, so I'll just stick that back in there and hopefully it'll root out. Primrose. 
I, I kill them every year. Not really. Well, no, yes, really. I keep planting them, they don't come back. So that's exactly what's happening. I'm killing them. I don't know what I'm doing. They used to grow effortlessly. You just put them in the ground and boom. They would take over, fill in a huge area to the point where you're plucking them out left and right. So it's kind of obnoxious the way they spread, but there have been planting them the last couple of years. They have not been growing. So I'm going to plant them somewhere else this year and uh, see if they do their thing and take off in a more loose soil. I've been putting them up on my hill underneath the apple trees, which just seemed like a primo spot for this type of plant. They really can take things dry. Like they're known for tolerating poor soil. That's what these are. I think it probably even says that on the tag. Yeah, look, it's the first thing it says on the tag. Tolerates poor soil, heat, and drought. Got you covered there underneath the apple tree. Great spot for it. Best if granted in gritty, sharply drained soil. Mmm. Okay, well, it's pretty clayish up there, but it does drain very well, and it's pretty gritty. I know you wouldn't think clay and grit go together, but the soil up there has been amended over the years. Gravel's always getting tossed up there. I usually have to dig through a lot of rock when I'm up there, so I don't know. I'm just going to move them further down the hill where they'll be close to the irrigation. I think that they probably just weren't getting enough water. That's my guess. But anyways, it's an evening prisno prim prim what? Evening primnose. This is the Siskiyou pink. Don't know if I'm saying that word right. They should get taller than this. They should get about a foot to probably 18 inches, 12 to 15 inches high. I'm gonna say usually they're about up here with these fun flowers on them. Kind of like a poppy as far as the nice papery thin petal goes. Easier to grow, cannot grow poppies here. It's way too hot. On the primrose subject, we can go ahead and talk about the next primrose I got. This is a cool one. The Sunset Boulevard Evening Primrose. Another Onothera. Rock garden plant. This is a cool one. The Sunset Boulevard has two-toned flowers on it. They start off yellow and they age out orange. Would you actually like to see the flowers while I'm talking about them as I'm reading the tag and talking at the same time? You see this yellowy color they start off and I don't, they don't really have any older flowers on them. You can see the ones that are aging out have more of that orange color to them. And in a few days, these yellow ones should be fairly orange. Not the most attractive structure on it, but it's going up on the hill. My dump garden, where I just put things that I like to grow and things that don't need much attention, which should be the case for the primrose. These get taller, they're 24 inches high. It's a 5 to 9, which uh, that one is also, by the way, a 5 to 9. Probably get a better picture of the flowers just looking right there. See, they're more orange once they open up further. It just had a nice color to it. I always like to make sure there's some yellows and oranges and reds over there because the dump garden's also where I plant a lot of things for the pollinators and try and get some natives in the ground too. These were a surprise. Apparently I've been really into strawberries. This is now the third, right? I bought two, no, I bought one, that big hanging basket at Greenscape not long ago, and now I have two more. I say surprise because remember I placed this order months ago. I had forgotten about these. These are the Gasana ever-bearing strawberries. They have a, a can't really tell right now. These aren't the most ideal flowers and it is dark out. So this picture is probably not amazing. Sorry about that, by the way. But I do mean nice big flowers for a strawberry that are pink, pink and white, and they produce a really big sweet fruit. Very abundantly too. They're supposed to be very abundant producers. I think the reason I like these is because you get the combination of an ornamental strawberry, meaning that you have the really fun flowers on them and the drapey habit, while it's still one that's edible and it's not just edible, but it's supposed to actually be a really juicy and sweet strawberry. Sometimes ever bearing strawberry doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be the best tasting strawberry. These are supposed to be pretty good. That's already got a nasty looking hairy goober hanging off of there. They're going to be fun to grow. I like to have the strawberries around. I don't know why. I don't really care for strawberries all that much because they taste okay. But I feed them to a lot of my pets and it's just fun to be able to pick strawberries. And I think it's fun to be able to go outside and just pick some food. Peppers would be more appropriate. I eat a fair amount of peppers and the animals eat them and greens, but those are more up. I don't know. I just, strawberries are easier. You can keep them in a container. I can move them around which is necessary because the light changes out here throughout the year. You know, as the sun shifts, I live at the bottom of a hill, so it will be sunny one time of the year and then dark the other time, and I'll have to move them. That's just easier. As if I couldn't put a pepper or something in a pot and move it too. Just for fun. They're strawberries. Who doesn't love a strawberry? This is the Hill Hardy Rosemary. It's, um, well, pretty tiny. Size-wise, leaving a little bit to be desired, but that is okay. It will grow. It's a rosemary officinalis. Considered a zone seven, as are a lot of rosemaries. I would imagine this probably gets listed down as to a zone six, but the main reason I got this is because by word of mouth from the people at the nursery, this is a variety that has been tried and true for people who live in St. Louis. Rosemaries and lavenders, it just really depending on what part of the city you live in, 
aren't always the easiest to grow in. You really have to make sure you're mounting your soils and keeping them away from the clays and all those things. But this one right here is supposed to be a very good performer in the area. So I thought we'll give it a try. Which else to say about it than I just thought it could be fun to try. I love rosemary and would like to be able to keep them out here all winter, but they usually die because things get hot and wet. Tritoscantia, Andersoniana, JS Brainstorm. I don't remember ordering this and I'm not sure why I did. Let me Google it. Okay, it just, it blooms longer than most of the other perennial type Tritoscantia is supposed to give you up to six months of blooms which is quite a bit longer than most of the others. Maybe, I guess that's why I got it, I don't know. I have wanted more purple flowers in the garden, and these are supposed to be very abundant and just bloom basically nonstop from the beginning of summer into the early to mid-fall, depending on your climate. These are hardy all the way to zone four, according to Monrovia. The tag here says three. I'm gonna go ahead and say four because may as well be more conservative just to be safe. They go 16 to 20 inches tall, big long grass strap-like leaves with clusters of very vibrant purple flowers. The flowers are fun before they open too. You can see they have that fuzzy texture to them, kind of like a gynara. Gynara, you know, the purple passion plant. Hopefully I will have had something up here on the screen. If not, here you go, editing Jeff. Put up a picture so people can see the beautiful flowers on the JS Brainstorm Tritoscantia. Oxalis! No, actually, it's not Oxalis. It's Trifolium. A Trifolium repens, two to four inches tall, eight to ten inches wide. We know that's not true. Zone four. It's a ground cover clover, and it smells so sweet. And well, I, aren't they all ground covers? That was redundant. Like calling a pin a pin number or an ATM machine an ATM. I had that one backwards. It smells great because of the you know the clover flowers on there. See, their two tones supposed to stay fairly low. It's supposed to be a pretty good spreader which is yeah, just the case with most trifoliums. There's no surprise there. I don't really have a lawn over on the other side of my yard. It's just a lot of spreaders, things like clover and natural violets, natural native violets, and there's some creeping jenny that's worked its way over there, crept its way into there, and I wanted to get this in the mix, get some nicer color to look at over there. Steppable and run across it. It's sturdy, it needs to establish itself first, but they're just fun plants. A good ground cover, one that you probably will regret having if you put it in the wrong spot. It smells so good. The bees absolutely love the flowers on a trifolium. I didn't even give y'all the full name. It's the Forlock Green Glow. That's the name on this one. It's a very, very, very good name for it because it does have a bit of a green glow to it, doesn't it? Okay. I was very excited about this one. And I think now that I'm seeing it in person, it's just one of those things where I'm going to have to give it some more time. This is a Masquerade Inigo Xanth. Those. It's just a kangaroo paw. Around here treated more as an annual. They don't like the wet winters that we have here. This one, you can't see it right now. I think it's going to need some more time, but the flowers on these have a blue fuzzy hue to them, at least under the right light they do. I said, I think I'm going to have to give it some more time. I saw some at the nursery and was going to talk about them, but knew I was there to pick one up, so I figured just wait till I got home. When things warm up, this will start blooming more profusely. Kangaroo paws are an excellent rock garden plant, succulent garden, keep them nice and dry. They can take the heat and the warmth. They're overall just very durable, sturdy plants that have these fun, long, fuzzy tubular flowers that come up above the foliage. The foliage is fun and grass-like, kind of like a nephophia. The leaves, that is, not the flowers. That's nothing like a nephophia. A lot's happened in the last, what for you is just like half a second. The, it's the next day, started to rain, and when it started to rain, I went inside, put the camera away, and immediately went to plant one of the things that I picked up at the nursery, the hibiscus, not hibiscus, hydrangea. Came out this morning, the entire patio was covered with all the little things, the little seedy flower things that fall out of the oak tree, so I blew the deck off, believe it or not. This is what it looks like after being blown off. I didn't get to that end because ran out of gas. Mostly just need to clean up a spot so I can get back down and I can show you the rest of the plants. We're going to talk about these. Then that hydrangea tree and try and get a few little things done out here. It's supposed to start raining again and it looks like it's going to rain every single day until Tuesday, which is good because I need Tuesday to film the garden tour. So that's, I would prefer it be Monday, but that's okay. We just have to do it on Tuesday. Yes, these are blown over. I stand them up and they blow back over, so that's where they can stay for now. Get to all that when it's time to get working on things. Here's the rest of what I got. I don't know really, what is it? Is the ground dry yet? Y'all even see this? The sun. I can't really see what's going on here. 
It's a whole bunch of different colocasias. Two of them are leukokasias, the rest are colocasias. Two cute little baby Thai giants here. You know, the Thai giants, they're hit or miss with me. They are very particular about the moisture around their roots and their planting depth, and they always do well for me up until the sun shift in August and the sun gets lower in the sky. That, and I think there have been some virus issues with them several years ago that I'm pretty sure have been worked out. And these look better than any of the ones I planted over the last few years. The problem is I kept getting them as these scrawny little, well, like these, these little things, just tiny little things that barely have any roots on them. And then they don't do as well for me. Combination of factories being what I already mentioned with the sun shift and all of those things. Usually their roots have recovered by the time the sun shifts. And then the last few years I have also had a puppy who's not really a puppy anymore, but for the last couple of years, keeping him out of the garden was a chore. He's much better about that now. So I think that these should do better for me this year than they have in other years. Fingers crossed. If you don't know the Thai giant, Lukokaja Thai giant is a huge elephant here. They get the picture that they have on the tag here really doesn't even do them justice. But I guess that's more of a realistic picture for people who maybe live up further north. I've had years where these things were as big as the hood of my car, the leaves on them. The leaves reach monstrous proportions, and that's some place where you start them small. You can grow these as a perennial. I want to say they're probably 8A, 8B. Uh, they'll die down to the ground for sure in 8, plant them down deeper. So this annual except in 8 to 10. But if you can keep a big portion of the upper growth alive during the winter time, whether you do it through a leaf cage or through mulching, whatever it is you need to do to make that happen, you'll have even bigger plants the next year. I generally just chop them, dig them up, and store them inside. They usually do fine like that. Sometimes they rot out. You just get new ones. Y'all know how that goes. Awesome plants. Love the Tide Giants. And then I think I talked about this one in the last video from last weekend. I'm pretty sure. These are Colocasia Redemptions. They get really big, shiny black leaves with that reddish pink center on them. These are a very popular colocasia that I think we will be seeing all over the place at the nurseries over the next few years. So that does kind of depend on how this first year of rollout and mass production goes, right? You don't always know until the consumer gets a hold of them and they can grow them for a year and then there's some feedback and see if maybe there's something needs to be changed or worked on. Pretty typical colocasia though as far as care goes. These seem pretty sturdy so I wouldn't expect any weird surprises out of them but you just never know until they've been grown out in mass production. Prior to this year, prior to 2024, you had to go through Brian's Botanical or anybody that he had given permission to or had licensed to sell them, which were typically like private sellers and things like that. I don't even know if he had actually done that. People were selling them without permission. I'm not sure, but I know that there were a few other places selling them last year or scamming that they were selling them. I don't, you know, hard to say when you see those things online, right? But now I think you'll be able to get these at all kinds of nurseries now. They're going to be all over the place. I would probably be picking up from Lowe's and Walmart next year. This next one, I have a lot to say about this elephant ear, and I don't know if this is the time or place for it, but I think we'll just do a brief rundown on it all. And if I need to make a separate video, then that's what I'll do. This is the Colocasia Polar Green, which is a trademarked name. Got that trademark back in 2023. And the sales pitch with this one is that it's the first reliably hardy colocasia to zone 5. They have pink stems, big chartreusey green foliage. You know, the leaves on all of these are going to change drastically as they grow with a pinkish red dot right in the middle. Does that sound familiar to y'all? Does it sound like anything else? Remember the pink china colocasia? Pink stems, reddish dot in the center, 3 to 5 feet high, hardy to zone 5 was the claim with that one. It's still around, so I don't know why I say was. I looked up the trademark. It's from a company called Two Plants International. They have a thing on their website, a whole category called Zone 5 Tropicals, which is basically this and Musa Baju and, and the, you know, the bulb things with the purple. Why can't I not remember what these are called? I have them over there with the purple. You know, those things. Agapanthus. Thinking this is more than likely just a rebranded pink china. I can't say that for sure. With trademarks, you don't have to register what goes into them with a the patent. There need to be some kind of explanation with what makes this unique and everything with the trademark, you just file it. With all the information's there about the name and the company and everything and the dates for when it was posted, but where it came from and why it has that name, that's not listed. It's not listed, at least not that I could see from Two Points International's website either. If it is a pink china, that's totally fine. 
saying reliably hardy to zone five, I really feel like that's a stretch because that's not always the case. A lot of people have not had luck with them in zone five. Pink Giant has never come back for me and I'm in 7A. So take from that what you will. Not saying that that's necessarily what this is. Hopefully, at the minimum, it's been improved upon. The Pink China's had a lot of viral issues. You know, it's tissue culture. It's pretty easy to remove that mess from the plants and have stronger stock to work with. So, at the very least, maybe they're going to be a more sturdy Pink China. We'll call them polar greens. That's what they're labeled as. But to me, I've seen a lot of pink chinas in little pots before, and this looks, that's what this looks like to me. Regardless, it's a nice elephant ear. They have a really colorful stem down below. So like I said, they have a nice light green color when they get bigger. This is still tiny little pathetic babies, right? With that pink dot in the middle, they offshoot like crazy, so you end up with really nice full plants. They don't produce a bulb like a lot of other color cages do, so there's nothing to dig up in the store. They don't run all over the place, at least mine never have it. Again, mine have never come back for me, so I've only ever gotten one year's growth out of them before. They've always ended up being annuals. The bikini teenies for me have always been the absolute hardiest elephant ear that I've grown out here. That's owned by Brian's Botanicals. So he should have the rights to those plants, so I don't think anybody's going to be taking the bikini teenies and rebranding them unless, the, you know, that gets sold and worked out on their end. When I ordered these, I was pretty excited about them. It's like, oh, I'm trying a new elephant ear that's hardy to zone five. And then I pick them up and I go, oh, that's a pink china. <laughs> pretty sure that's what that is. Just for legal reasons, have to point it out, I don't know. This is all just speculation. Maybe just very similar plants. Maybe they have done something with it so that it stands out from the pink china. Who knows? Time will tell. Hopefully if there is, it's going to be that it's hardy and not full of viruses. That'd be great. Okay, and then the Limelight Prime Hydrangea Tree. I rushed to get that thing planted just because it's supposed to be storming for the next few days. I wanted to get it in the ground because I know it's just going to blow over constantly like the hibiscus trees over here have been doing. Probably the fastest I've ever dug a giant hole for a plant. In an area of the garden that's getting completely redone this year, so far in the mess, that's all going to be changing in the next month or so. It's an anchor plant and a privacy plant. There used to be a huge Rose of Sharon in place of that. I'm not going over there because the entire reason I planted that was to block out the inside of my neighbor's home. They have a big bay window area. You can get a little peek of it but it'd be weird to show much more of that. And right now it hasn't grown and added the privacy yet. There used to be a huge rose of Sharon there and it got knocked down by a storm last year. And I thought that a paniculata would be a great option to replant there instead of a rose of Sharon because the rose of Sharon, that's the hibiscus Cruz, they take an eternity to flush out. I know that's a bit much. They just, it, they don't do anything until it warms up. So they don't flush out and look nice and full here until probably mid to late May depending on the spring and how warm things have been. The paniculatas, you know, they start pushing out in like March. The limelight primes go four to six feet high, so they're much smaller than the regular limelights. They hold their branches upright, unlike these over here. I can't see my screen. Can you, is there a hydrangea tree down there? I hope so. The vanilla strawberries have bigger flower heads on them, giant, giant panicle shaped flower heads that droop down because they're so heavy. The limelight and the limelight prime, they don't do that. They're gonna hold those branches upright and they start flowering earlier than the regular lime white as well, which is great if you live someplace like zone four, zone five, where otherwise I don't think paniculatus would start blooming for you until like what, mid-August, something like that. It's supposed to start going a few weeks earlier. That's why that's what I wanted to plant over in that spot. Cool to have that ball to look at with the panicle flowers on. I mean, when they're not in flower, they still look nice. It's not going to get so big that it's a nuisance. Four to six feet off of that main lead there totally maintainable and probably perfect for that spot to just add a touch of privacy so we're not like looking into each other's yards and kitchens and everything but it's not so much privacy that I'm telling like the neighbors should go away they're very nice people and it's nice being able to converse with them through the fence and everything but also you know they shouldn't have to feel like oh I need to close my curtains every time I sit down at the dinner table because there's people out here running around you know what I mean I'm very excited about it because the limelight primes I'm pretty sure I mentioned this yesterday at the nursery but Online, they were showing them as only being sold in the smaller sizes. The standards usually come in two sizes. Of, I think it's like a number three and a number five or something like that. I don't remember, three and a half and five foot, maybe. Pretty sure it's one of the big ones. I haven't taken a measuring tape to measure the lead. These down here are the large standards of the vanilla strawberries. And it's typically the same size you get with your limelight primes and pinky winkies and quick fires that are standardized. So I could take a measuring tape to it and figure it out, but I don't a reason to do it. It's already in the ground. What's done is done. I'm going to give that Limelight Prime the year and see how I like it because I think that the Limelight Primes would do much better in these planters. The vanilla strawberries have been doing great, but they get 
almost too big and they have that droopy habit to them which makes pruning on them difficult because you can prune on them in the fall but you really should wait until the spring right when they're starting to push out new growth and by then the stems that have been weighed down from the giant flowers they have an arch to them so trimming back by a third which is all you're supposed to do with a paniculata is difficult to do because you have this long branch that's hanging and arching and you don't want to prune below the arch. You want to prune above it so that things take off more upright. Hopefully I'm making sense here. I'm just saying there might be a swap out. Possibly. The vanilla strawberries may end up going into the landscape and if I like the limelight prime enough, maybe those will be going over there. I think that they would be a better fit just size-wise, right? All right, that was fun. You got to see the new plants. I have done a little bit of work out here this morning. I blew the deck off. I need to do it again. I need to clean the pool. I'm not going to bore y'all with that. I got the hose reel set up and it doesn't work. So, need to return that. There's going to be a hose out here for a few more days, <laughs> or maybe weeks, until I find a hose reel that actually does what it's supposed to do. This is the third hose reel in two years that I've tried that does not work. It rolls it up, and then it just bunches up on one end, and it doesn't go back to the other. And with the frequency that I use the hose out here, it needs to be an easy process, and it was not easy even getting the, like, 15 feet rolled up that I got rolled up on there before it started jamming up. So... I thought about just tinkering with it and trying to make it work, but like I said, I use the hose so frequently, it needs to just work. I'm not going to tinker with it every single time I have to put the hose away, because then y'all know, I'm never going to put the hose away. It's always going to be out. If it's going to be a pain to put it away, that defeats the purpose of a hose reel, right? Pick up and start doing some stuff out here. Don't need to do a lot, just need to get, like I said, just want to make a dent. Okay, can't find bungee cords, but I did find some old dog collars. That should do the... Tr I don't... Y'all... You, you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I just picked up the camera guns blazing, didn't I? Oops. It's those hibiscus trees on the patio that keep blowing over. So the storms are rolling in right now. And I thought this would work to get them stabilized on the fence. Usually I use bungee cords, but I don't... I guess I'm out. So this will have to do. I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying something. These, if you don't know what I'm talking about, since the storms are rolling in, I figured the best thing to do instead of rushing to throw some impatience in the ground, which I actually don't think I should do right now either. Hopefully we'll have talked about that in the garden tour, but I don't know. I haven't filmed it yet. I don't like filming this before that, but it's just the way things are going right now. Uh, to just pick these up and hook them to the fence over there. That way they don't blow around. Look at the flat. Isn't that just freaking beautiful? I love the flowers on this hibiscus, particularly when they're fresh. They even, they have a curve to them, right? So a lot of hibiscus, the petals open up just straight out from each other. This one, it has a pinwheel swirl on it. It's just, it's so pretty. I know I probably went on about that enough in the video that when I got, that's, I think that just came out right now. Actually, I need to check. What time is it? What's even happening? Sorry, it's my multitasking brain. And take this one up here, right around there. Yeah. Okay, that should work. Say before I've even attempted to buckle this up to the fence. Just makes sense that that would work. Although, what doesn't work is trying to do this with one hand. Okay, I think that's good. Got a little bit of wobble. Some give to it, but I think that should be good enough. I'll grab the other one. Yeah, like that. Those are nice and secure now. I don't think they're going to go anywhere because I'm strapped up fairly high. This one's tired than the other one because there's a robin's nest in here. 24 hours, that's all it took. A robin kept flying in there and it would fly over and I would shake the tree and say, no, oh, go, get out. And it came back at some point and I missed it and it built an entire nest in here which was just not a smart move but it does keep coming over and checking it out because yeah, I haven't planted it yet and it's a plant that's blown over because it's not potted up into anything big enough to hold it I was hoping it would go elsewhere and get its nest started somewhere else I don't think I mentioned I got a new Fort McNair chestnut did I I did here it is isn't it beautiful one I planted last year didn't make it through the winter so I'm going to try it in a different spot this year maybe I will have talked about that in the garden tour so maybe I have mentioned it Hard to say, who knows? I ran inside to take my hoodie off because it was actually getting pretty toasty out here. Then I like 15 minutes and come back out and it's cloudy and it had dropped about 13 degrees and now I'm cold again. Go figure. Gotta love spring. Okay, Musa Kakopo. <laughs> there it is, right there. Since I'm handling things that are blowing over, may as well handle the banana. I'm going to put it over here, I think. Does that work in there with the bajus? I don't mind if they hang out together. I see no issue with that. There's already going to be a huge clump of mulch there in the winter in case that doesn't go to fruit and needs another season. Maybe, I don't know. Well, that was the plan anyway, so going to have to make it work. Also, I hope the audio is okay. I switched over to using my phone because it's misting out, and the wireless microphone sometimes just doesn't play well 
with the phone. So if there's some odd crackling or just no audio at all, I guess I, there'll be a voiceover and that'll be explaining that whole situation if it comes down to it. Do I have any root and grow? I don't think I do. I really like to use root and grow when I drop bananas in the ground, but that's okay. I have a bucket full of slow release over here. That's better than nothing. Yeah, slow release. Better than nothing. Just gonna get a little bit in the bottom of the hole. Not very much. This is just the classic coat. Okay, I have y'all set up kind of far up above the hole, but you get the point. There's a hole in the ground, some fertilizer in the bottom. The thing with the slow release fertilizers is that they need to be in contact with the roots of the plant, at least for the most part, in order for them to be effective. So having some right at the bottom, that'll be in contact with the base of the root ball. And then, <laughs> oops, knocking everything over here. As I was saying, and then as I refill, when I get about halfway up the root ball, sprinkle in a little bit more. That was actually a lot. The main thing is that it's distributed in there and it's in close contact to the edge of the root ball. Go and then get that in. The rest of the way, use my hands to make a well the same size as the root ball. Now that that's up to basically the very top of everything. And that's when I come in and go ahead and I do a much larger sprinkling around the top like that. Work it in gently with the fingers. This is now on top of the root ball. So when I water, that's going to work its way down in there. And of course, cover with mulch to help hold that in place. Oh, and get that tag back in there so I don't forget which one is the Kokopo. Although I think it should be pretty obvious since the Kokopo has different colors and won't get as big as the Bajus, but just to be safe, may as well keep the label right there with it. It looks cute. That's such a cute banana tree. There should be plenty of space there for it. The Bajus, you know, they are getting a big cutback this year. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna dig up this piece and move it more towards the back at some point some point being sooner than later, because the way everything's been spreading just I don't know, doesn't look right. Things have aged out. I want to get that nice round habit back to the clumps. Pick up that chunk right there, move it more towards the back. I just, I think it'd look a lot nicer. <sighs> Side quest. <laughs> I was coming over here to grab an elephant ear to plop in the ground and then notice that this hibiscus was just starting to wake up, which means it's time to dig it up and move it. This is a, I think called Candy Crush. Hardy hibiscus, one of the machetos, mascotos, machet, blah, blah. the dieback type hardy hibiscus. It has really big pink, bubblegum pink, giant flowers on it. Only gets about four feet tall. Doesn't get enough sun right here. I've had it in the ground here now for two years, and I keep having issues with them getting sooty mold on them more towards the fall time when they're pretty much done blooming. They also haven't been doing a ton of blooming for me because these start to bloom right around the time these bananas get on a good amount of height. And when they hit that height, They've been shading these hibiscus here. So I think it would just be best to go ahead and dig it up and move it, which I think was something I said I was going to do in the fall in a garden tour at some point. I don't know, maybe. The best time to do that if you have to move one of these things is right when they start to break dormancy or even before, actually, would probably be better. Maybe right before would be better. It's okay, this is still in the very beginning stages. So pulling it up and moving it's not a big deal. Can see the root mass hasn't gone nuts it's not <laughs> doing anything wild yet the main thing is being able to pick it up move it without disturbing the roots I've already dug a hole for it not sure if that's gonna be quite deep enough eh, i think i could go a little bit deeper with that i think that should be good i made it a little bit more wide too so that, that root ball can go out more yeah i'd say that's about even our moisture lovers and the soil over here drains very 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 sharply so if you start it out just a little bit deeper, not much, right? You don't want to submerge the crown of the plant any lower than it's already been. I think that this is probably perfect. Enough. No slow release for this one. That was just for the bananas. I'm going to go ahead and try to just knock those tulip bulbs back down in there. They're fine. They're just tulips. I'm not worried about them. Yeah, bananas are very heavy feeders. That banana is already in active growth, whereas this is a plant that's just now breaking dormancy. Adding slow release to this would be a complete and total waste of time. It doesn't need it yet. Maybe in a couple weeks, but at that point I'll be doing liquid fertilizers. All right, good. Glad to have that done. That's been on the back of my mind for a while to remember to do it. I could go ahead and cut those dead pieces up. I think I'm gonna wait just a little while in case I decide I might need to move it. I'm pretty sure this is where I want it. I also want to let the idea sit with me for a bit because I'm pretty sure the spot gets kind of shady towards the fall too, but nowhere near as shady as it does down there. This should be a lot better for it, I think. Now, let me see, bananas. Oh, got the 
piece of garbage over here ready to be returned to the store. I don't get it. It says right here, 225 feet. Why is it so hard to find a hose reel? One that's covered and in a box that can actually handle a hose. That doesn't make any sense to me. Three quarter inch hose, not unusual. Lots of people use them. That I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Call it KCS. I have the diamond head. I was thinking about putting over in this area, right around here, but I'm waiting for my Eucamus to come up, if they're going to come up. They're usually up by now. But I figure, you know, maybe they just need some more time and some more heat. And give that another week or two. I don't want to start digging in here until I know for sure where those are. So maybe that just has to wait. Oh, yeah. And those Kinsley Ghost Honeysuckles that I picked up, I don't know. I think they were in last weekend's video. I want to put those right where I just put those hibiscus <laughs> on the fence line. I guess I'll just have to wait again to put those in the ground. That's going to be the nature of things for the next few weeks. I have to wait for the big palm trees here. The big palm trees here. I need to wait for the big palm trees to get here from the greenhouse to do a lot of the planting because I plant around those things. And uh, that's kind of how I set the tone for the year with where I put the palm trees. So I'm pretty sure they're going to go in all the same spots. So what I'm thinking I will work on is maybe this area down here. <laughs> you can see things are a little rough. I have some shade perennials I've wanted to get in the gr that I've wanted to get in the ground over here. Butter burrs and things. I'm gonna have to pull those up just so I can squeeze a few more things in this spot. Is that good? We zoomed out. Can we see everything? Ew, ew, look at my that's gross. Ew. The butter burrs. Love them. They're great. These are the Pedicides Japonicus. They spread like crazy, very, very prolific plants. And because of that, I don't really stress about pulling them up and out of the ground when they fill in areas that I would rather have other plants in. See, I have this big, beautiful pot back here. I'm not sure if it's in frame, but you'll see it eventually. And I don't want these growing up right in front of it that blocks it. You can't even see how beautiful the pot is. I might leave just the one in the corner right over here with the rest of these. I think, I think those need to go. Oh yeah, you could definitely see that from back there, that big, beautiful Venetian pot. No point in having that hidden by these plants, right? So that's a start for this area. Need to get going on over there. Look at what got blown out of the tree in that storm. That's pretty gnarly, isn't it? Look at all that fungus. It's fascinating and I respect it, but that looked gross. Okay, it's just a few more things to pull up here. And clear up this entire front area. I think I should actually probably come in here and do this area right here too because of, well there's supposed to be a walkway here. Look at that that one had a big root on it. I can get the rest of that out of there. Here we go. Come in here. Inch you out of the way. Mm-hmm. Better, right? Not perfect, but it's better. It's at least headed in the right direction. This is my line. Edge of the path over here. There's some rocks over there that need to be dug up. Sticks in the way. Pulmonaria. Looks good there. I like that. That's going to be very nice in the early spring and late winter when it wakes up and does its thing. I'm also thinking to do this. <laughs> She's really just doing things crazily here, aren't I? Ridiculous coleus back here. This one goes like 40 inches high at the max and it is a sun to shade coleus. It has a beautiful red burgundy full oh sorry <laughs> burgundy red Fulton, you can see it it's going to be a big red bush over here in the background which i don't know if it's going to that's like totally necessary because there's a big red plant right there but i just i don't know i wanted it over here okay and then in my final hole i will be putting in behave yourself also i don't know what this is i have no idea it's cable that goes to something so i went ahead and i pulled it up and out of the way i'm just going to try and plant around it and put it back in the, I don't know. No idea what it goes to. Last hole, oak leaf acanthus. Acanthus mollus oak leaf. Look at those roots. Aren't those awesome? These things have great big, thick, chunky roots. May end up needing to come in here and add some soil <laughs> into this area. Sorry, I keep knocking the tripod around because the gravel over here is so, the gravel, the soil has so much gravel in it that I think it might drain perhaps a smidge bit too well. The crown up just a little bit high that's because I have had issues with these rotting out in the winter times. So that way it's up higher. I'll have to mulch it. But I think that's probably the good way to go because there's going to be gravel piling up into here. Because I haven't, I need to refill the gravel. There's usually gravel everywhere over here. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks nice. Have some color over here. 
the red in the back and that acanthus, that'll fill out this entire area with a nice big round rosette shape and really tall flower spikes. Probably not this year, but next year. It could do something this year, but I'd be surprised. I had to get that acanthus as close to the edge as possible because they do need light. There's a lot of shade over here, so the more the better. It's not that shady yet. It'll get a good amount of light until like, I'd say early to mid-June, and then it's going to be mostly morning sun and afternoon shade, which might be perfect. That's what I was thinking anyways, because it will have the warmth of the sun to wake it up in the late winter, early spring, and to get it moving and growing. And then when it gets really, really, really hot out, it will have the shade from the mimosa tree in the afternoon. Just like I talked about with everything else, so when we moved more towards August, it being way too much shade. That's why I have multiples of these. I'm gonna plant them all over the place and just see where they do the best. At least that was the plan. Just move them. Whatever areas they do the best in will be the areas where I plant more. I don't think I could really fit more over in that area, but you get the point. I completely forgot everything that was going on out here. Shade plants. That'll, you can't see it from here. You just saw it. That's a big improvement. I am thinking as much as I want to keep going and getting more things planted from over in this area, this is ideal transplanting weather. So what I might do is dig up this um, <laughs> the banana tree that's right there and just scoot it back. It's too close to the front. I think I already talked about that. It just needs to go back a little bit. And then I have an inset in the garage, a red banana inset Morelii from last winter that goes over in this area. And it would probably be smart to get that in the ground right now as well. The reason I'm thinking that is just it's the weather, right? It's going to be cloudy, rainy, misty over the next few days. My irrigation system's not up and running yet. So I figure anything where I have to be chopping up roots should be done now because it's not really all that hot yet so if you damage some roots the plants can't take up so much water so much water they can't take up as much water but that's okay because it's cloudy and going to be rainy so it'll help restore those roots more quickly does that make sense i took a break have a little cocktail here it's fine it's saturday i got the baja blast here a little extra caffeine i know chemicals but it's really it's fine it's mostly vodka anyways don't worry about it and the only reason i'm updating everybody on this is because my microphones are dead so i'm gonna cut back a minute maybe some things will be done over there hopefully done it looks great doesn't it sorry try and hold still been gliding doing the thing hold still i'm gonna make people seasick <laughs> it looks great doesn't it there's not much to say about it. These are all things that are going to take time to settle in and put their roots out. The end set, I still need to go in and cut off all the the old fibrous pieces, the old pieces of pseudo stem. You know, they always end up having a lot of that on there. I didn't want to mess with that. I figured probably shouldn't be doing anything with anything very sharp since it's starting to get dark. And, you know, like I just said, mostly vodka anyways. The only other thing I kind of really wanted to get done tonight was to move these hydrangea trees back into their spot. I don't know if I should do that by myself, but I really want to, so I'm probably going to. Also, like, I'm not going to be alone that much longer. I have company coming over, so maybe I should just... I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. No, bad idea. Not going to do that. It, <laughs> a few minutes pass. I had to think about things. I also just realized, only mentioning this now because I might forget it later, and I don't... No, you're not going to be able to see it. You saw the acanthus that I planted down there. The sprinklers don't hit that spot, so maybe that wasn't a good idea? I don't know, I'm redoing all the drips, so I can run a drip head to it, but it's going to be a minute till I can do that. But the new hose is actually long enough to reach over there. The old hose didn't reach over there, so that's good. And it's up and running, so no problems there. I just need to find the hose reel, that's what I was saying. I can kind of get this hose to reach over to that spot. That's like the spot where neither of the hoses reached very well. And I'm going to have to water regardless since it's a new plant. So maybe that doesn't matter. I don't know. Just thinking out loud here. Okay, I feel pretty good about what I got done today. I feel like I should have gotten more planted, but I was just working in between the mist and the rain. I usually would just work in the rain, but the camera situation that I found my microphones that work on this device, my phone, which <laughs> they're not even hooked up because they died, but they were helpful while I was down there. I don't remember what my point was. We'll pick up tomorrow or the next day. I don't know. I've got a whole week until this video comes out. My main objective here that I don't think I even said in the beginning of this video was to get as much done before Tuesday. I think I did talk about this. Get it done by Tuesday because Tuesday I need to film the garden tour. And I'd like things to look somewhat more presentable. There's only so much I can do without the hose reel. And I've decided that I need to do a lot of research on the hose reel this time because just going in and buying one that says it will work apparently 
isn't the move since I keep doing that and they don't work for <laughs> hoses. What is it? Why? That doesn't make sense. All you have to do is work. Like you buy a hose reel thinking that, okay, well, when I turn the thing, it's going to suck the hose up, but then it doesn't. Why? A three quarter inch hose is not unusual. It's a very standard hose size. So what's that? The Suncast. Suncast is kind of a crappy brand. Just been completely honest there. Some of their stuff lasts a long time. I think the old hose reel that I had out here I had for like 10 or 12 years. That was a Suncast, but it had its issues. And that was with a 5 8 inch hose. So I uh, need to do some research and some reading to figure out the right hose reel. It needs to be one that's covered because the hose is bright orange. And I always have people ask me, why don't you do a retractable? And it's for a few different reasons. One, finding a three quarter inch hose, which is necessary because that bad water pressure. So the bigger the hose, the better the water pressure. Three quarter inch hoses aren't as common with the retractables and the ones that do exist don't have the best reviews when you get them up to 100 foot. I need them to be at least 100 feet for them to make any sense to have out here. That you need to mount them to a post or mount them to the siding and I can't dig down and put a post over there because there's pipes and plumbing that go all along. I was moving my, my hand before I got to my points. Right along this wall right here, there's a lot of pipes underground. And then that wall right there, lots of pipes and lots of pipes underneath this wall of the house. They're all connected to the gutters and then drains that are underneath everything to carry the water that builds up from over here in this area down to this side of the yard so it can go out to the storm sewers because if you didn't do that with all the cement around here everything would just go back into the basement and that would be a huge problem so I can't put a big you know giant I think they have to be a minimum four inch post I don't think I could get one down on the ground in that spot without breaking a bunch of stuff and you're supposed to take them off during the winter I don't want to do all that that seems like a headache yeah, that's enough of that we'll pick up between the rain sometime over the next few days I need to take a shower and make myself presentable because I'm covered in mud. For some reason, I kept slipping while I was over there doing things. I don't know why. Mostly vodka anyways. Morning, Turbs. So last night was fun. Did y'all have a good last weekend? I hope so. It's early morning. It's about to storm. I think about 20-ish minutes until that starts happening. I think I need to pull these hydrangea trees in back towards the steps of the pool. I should probably wait until I have help with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. I didn't do it last night because, you know, there was enough going on last night and it was dark out, but I think that it's fine to go ahead and do it myself. But I don't know, I may as well try, right? Not too bad. My main concern was that it was gonna scratch up the patio and it looks okay, I mean, muddy. That's all right, nothing wrong with a little bit of mud. That's better. Been missing having those over there. Actually, really it was a mixed bag because I, I did start to appreciate how that looked just being open, but well, what am I going to do? I already have them. That's where they have to go. There's no other place to put them. I think I need to scoot this one in and over a little bit. That's all right. I had to leave this one. Oh, that's just my finger. There we go. I have that one turned because the growth on it just has never been even. So I have the side with the majority of the growth facing away from where most of the sun is during the day, hoping that maybe it will even itself out. I pruned it back pretty heavily this spring or late winter. You know with the panicle hydrangeas take off a third you're really not supposed to do more than that. With that one I went about 50% because well it just had so much growth pulling this way and I need it to it needs to start doing something in the other direction. Time has passed because when I said 40 minutes or however long it's until it started raining it turned out to be more like three. I moved those and it had a quick downpour. I came over here and started working on these ginger containers. I would like to get these gingers potted up. These. These gingers right here, the Alpinias, the Rimbut Variegatas. One, there's a little bit too much sun over here. You can see I'm starting to burn up. And then the second reason I'd like to get them planted up is because I need to clear the space out because I have this big, beautiful pot over here that's supposed to be right here. This isn't working. I don't, did a full sentence come out of my mouth to explain anything that's going on in the wind? It's blowing things over. We just live with it and have to move on with things. I can't just keep picking things up nonstop because they're going to keep breaking. I like how I have my microphone in my hand. The audio in this video is going to be all over the place. All I have to just need to plug it in. Okay, but to do this with these gingers, <laughs> back on topic here, I need to scoop out the bulk of the soil that's in there and get the old root balls out. You can see I've already gotten one of those root balls taken care of. Usually it's a huge pain to do this because of the sides of the pot being wider than the top of the container. So, you know, you have a plug that you can't get out. But with the Root Slayer shovel, I love this thing. I love this shovel so freaking much. Get a Root Slayer shovel. It has been such a game changer when it comes to dealing with stubborn things. 
I just went in and gently chopped around the sides and then just boom pulled out a nice shaped root ball and then scraped the sides with it and getting the soil it that way it's so much easier so 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 much more simple than how I thought that that would go or how it's gone in the past but in order to <laughs> keep on with this I need to go get the gorilla cart the gorilla cart has a few plants in it and it's also buried behind the croton in the garage Weather is fine to go ahead and bring the croton out. I was hoping to get a few more neem sprays in. I prefer to do the neem in any spring period in the growth space and not out here. But the spot where I need to put the croton is going like right over here. And there's no flowering plants over there. So just kind of have to be careful about the time of day when I spray it. I think it should be fine. And it needs to come out anyways. It's not looking very good. I had to pull one of its stakes out a week ago. Or I think it was a week ago. That, maybe the time doesn't matter. Because I can't get the lid off of this sprayer and I needed something to stick in here to pull and give me some more leverage and it didn't work. It just broke. I had to order a new one. I had to get a whole new sprayer because this lid is for, it's stuck in there. I put some uh, um, penetrating lubricant down in there and I let that sit for a full day. Did nothing. I tried boiling water. Nothing. Like that is just, it's in there. It's not coming off and now it's to the point where I've tried so much that the pieces are broken down in there. Not thrilled about that, but I really like this sprayer a lot. So I went ahead and got a new one. I'm going to cannibalize as many parts off of it as I can too in case the new one breaks. Uh, that was the explanation for the croton leaning. You're going to see it. I'm going to bring it out here. It's got a big lean to it just because I pulled one of the stakes out and it's not rooted into its oversized container. So it's, it's, it's a whole thing. It's fine. It's not a plant that I would expect to be looking all that good this time of year anyways, because I didn't keep it under grow lights this year. I just let it sit near the garage door and it did totally fine that way. It doesn't look as good as it normally would when I bring it outside, but when I usually bring it outside, it throws a fit and drops its leaves and ends up looking like garbage for like three weeks anyways until it flushes up new growth. And it's just so big. It didn't have room towards this end of the growth space where I used to keep it. It needed to be over there to not shade everything else from getting light. I'm getting off topic here. The gingers. I need the gorilla carts. I need to... Okay, other things are about to happen. Yeah, see? It's got a lean to it, but that's all right. I can fix that. I think that having that hang out over here in my little rehab area is probably the best thing I can do for it. Really a good time to move it out. In general, when you think about it, just because, you know, overcast, it's supposed to rain for a few days, it's not that hot, it's not that cold. Good transitional time. It's the time of year, they're not looking that hot. Some of them are just waking up, have Musa Florida over here, had to cut that back. It started to get some rot on it during the winter time, so I just cut it all the way down. And it put up a baby, Tahitian, Tahitian, Tahitian flame, Hidichium. I accidentally bumped it into something, so that's, that's I did that, that's my fault. That's fine. It's just waking up. But trio started down here, also just waking up. Some of them I try and keep going during the winter, and others I just toss into a corner and let them die back. They wake up on their own. They flush out. Look great by the, like, I don't know, early to midsummer. And a spindle that needs to be repotted, and it's absolutely covered in mealybugs, so fun. I'm going to leave that on its side for right now, because I need to grab the hose and blast that off. I think I should do that before I do anything else. I'd like to get going on this ginger project, but it's got, you know, look at it. See all those mealies in there? I can't just ignore that. You have to handle it. Move this one over here just so that I can remember to get it watered with the other gingers. And then this one, it really doesn't even matter where this one goes right now because it's just now waking up. I should use two hands for this. <laughs> I think it's so much easier to just rinse them off when you bring them outside. The nice thing about this time of year is things aren't, you know, they're not potted up yet. So it's easier to go ahead and just lay them down on their sides and get the gunk off of them, the mealybugs. The one concern I always have though when I do this, or I don't know if I'd say concern, but the thought that goes into it is that you know, never really know, if, is, is it actually going to kill the bugs or am I just blasting them off so that they can spread elsewhere? At the very least with mealybugs, the pressure should be high enough to get that waxy coating off of them which makes them susceptible and they will die more easily and it should be blasting out any of their little egg packets and the things they use to take over. And once the plants are outside, nature does a pretty good job of handling things like mealybugs. Not so much spider mites, but mealybugs, generally birds and other critters will take care of those. I also brought the Dracaena out because I went back to the garage to shut the door and 
turn the alarms back on because I had that gate open for a minute. And I figure it's about that time of year where every time you go to the garage and come back to the backyard, may as well bring a plant with you. Alright, I'd say that's pretty good. I'm still see, there's still some on there. I'm going to just have to go in there with my fingers and just see, you can just go that way. That's fine. Give it another once over. Eh, I don't see anything else on here. I'd say that's okay. So you keep an eye on it over the next couple weeks. Check on it frequently. I have to go in and do these things repeatedly. It is amazing how well these little critters cling on to the foliage. That water pressure was pretty good. And there's still some that were holding on in there. That needs a repot. That needs a repot. That needs a repot. This is okay. So apparently this is now just my repot corner. It's not warm enough to be repotting tropicals yet, but it is warm enough to go ahead and pot up some gingers. I realized that I think I just contradicted myself saying it's not warm enough to repot the tropicals. So let me come over here and pot up some gingers. But you know, it's what I'm doing, so it's fine. Okay, hear me out. Oh, hey cardinal friend. Is there a game on? I need to check that. There might be a game on right now. I don't want to go back on everything I was just saying about potting up the gingers over here, but I also started to think, wouldn't heliconias look good over here too? I just figured I'd do the same thing I did last year. It looked great. And these Zaremba gingers did great in this spot. They have a nice flow to them. They move out kind of like a wave and it looks like the dolphins were coming out of them and it was just a good spot for them. They grew really well here but also I'm thinking it might be fun to try something different in some Chaconiana heliconias that just kind of a yellowish orange inflorescence on them. Those will look pretty cool up against the blue with the dolphins coming out of them too. They don't have the same outward growth habit. It's gonna be much more upright but a change could be good. It might be fun. And it has to be the Chaconiana. Those are the only ones I can get mail ordered in a 10 inch container. It's the only option for Heliconia for this spot. My uh, hang up, the reason I'm talking about this is because I can't help but wonder if the, the gingers were doing well in this spot, then do we really think Heliconias are gonna do well? Those gingers don't like as much afternoon sun in the heat as a uh, ginger, or not a ginger, as a Heliconia does. I got distracted, there's a little caterpillar thing. Hey, what, where'd it go? Can you find it? There we go. See it? It's like your 20th dose of ADD moments from me for this video. So would a heliconia even do well? It's going to want more sun than the ginger does in order to look nice. I just have a feeling that come mid to late summer, it's going to have a weird growth habit to it and stop flowering. Whereas the gingers, they keep doing their thing in this spot. They did really well here. So I don't know. It's something to think about. It's not a big deal that I will have the two extra gingers because like, there's plenty of places to put them. I'm gonna order the heliconias anyways. They won't be here until mid-May, but that's okay because I wouldn't really wanna pot them up until it's nice and warm. They're a plant that really likes the warmth in order to start growing and doing anything. I don't know, I'm just putting that out there. So I'm not gonna be potting up the gingers. I will go ahead and gut these containers out and try and get the Alocasia borneo giants planted up here on the hill. And then maybe those uh, polar green ones too. I just I need to get a few more things done. And this is what I was talking about earlier. With this shovel you can really get down in there and cut out that root ball. It glides through so freaking smooth. Slices right through those roots. Which I, it's not really surprising, right? It's a ginger. They don't exactly have the most stubborn roots. The rhizomes can be pretty tricky to get through when they get big enough, but this, it slides through pretty easily. Let's go through, keep doing that until I stop hearing any cracks or crunches. It has those serrations on each side so you can wobble it around, give it a little pull back, see if it starts to budge. Try and come in at more of an angle here. Over there. Yeah, that one's, this one's a little bit more stubborn. Maybe I just had really good luck with this one. I think, oh sorry, all over the place here, that the trick here, see how there's a gentle fork at the end of the shovel there? Raise it up to the midsection of that root ball, and I bet that that will, yeah, see, lifting right out now. Do that a few more times, it should pop right out. So much easier with a nice sharp shovel. There's a few little roots left down there, it pulls right like that. Oh, so much easier. I can go back there for now. So the plan here, regardless of whether or not I pot up these gingers, was to get this soil out of the containers. I want to use nice fresh soil for them because I was using the water-wise soil which can be more compact and not drain as well. Not as much oxygen with it. A lot of gardeners don't like it. These are the only containers I use it in just because it's very necessary for this spot. It gets really toasty over here. The gingers did really, really well in it. So I'm going to do that again, but I don't want to reuse the same soil. Sometimes I'll reuse the same soil, but I'll usually do like 50% 
and blend it in with something nice and fresh and add a handful of compost to help liven it back up. Or even sometimes just a handful of a nice high quality soil like Ocean Forest to help cut it and make it nice. But uh, with this, I want it all out of there and I'm going to spread it up here where I plant those alocasias because this from here and all the way over to this mimosa tree is all new garden bed. I didn't film the process last year because there were construction workers everywhere for on the other side of the fence while I was doing it. That used to be a lawn and uh, I had to bring in enough mulch and compost to raise things up about eight inches to let the grass die off below everything. There's still a good amount of mulch in there. It's slowly starting to turn into a nice soil, but those things take time, right? So I'm going to add this into those areas because uh, this is the time to do it. We'll be mulching here in a few weeks. May as well get this stuff down now, add compost to it. That's why, that's what's going on here. That's why I'm still working on this is one, it'll be nice to have it done. And two, so it'll be some more fresh, nice soil to use when I pop the alocasias up here. I'm also realizing now that I have this done, there's no way I had enough potting soil to pot up those gingers. So yes, it's good that I have some time to think about it. Who would have thought these two, these are not little. I think they're 18 inches at the tops. So they're probably 24 inches at the widest, but that's, you know, grow carts three quarters of the way full of soil there. I only had three bags to work with. And like I said, I cut it. I add bark chips, usually add some coarse perlite to increase drainage. Like I said, that water wise stuff is more clumpy. A little bit of sand, those things. So it's bulked up some. I don't just use the soil straight out of the bag, but uh, I don't, there's no way. I don't even have enough amendments to bulk up the three little bags that I bought for this. Nope, no way. One thing I didn't mention, uh, it's not always a great idea to use old potting soil in your garden beds. One, because there might be something in it. If you use the systemic or anything like that, don't add it to your garden beds. You already have soil that's not draining very well. If you have a lot of clay, not really a great idea because it can end up holding onto a lot of moisture. When I do this, it's a very, very, very thin spread across a large area. So this is going to be going from right here all the way down there. It's just a little bit. It's like it's just getting seasoned. I'm just seasoning it <laughs> with the old soil. There's lots of organic material in here. The old roots, there's some leaves. I've seen some insect carcasses, the bugs, mostly isopods, went nuts in these containers over the winter time. So you're trying to make sure to give it back. It's not great to give the perlite and the soil release back, but what can you do? There aren't a lot of other options when you have old soil. You got to do something with it. It's the main thing is to put it someplace where it won't be a ton of runoff and it can do it. So is that, did I make a, was that a good enough disclaimer? I hope so. Okay, alocasias. I'm going to plant those up. Don't think I'm going to film that because, well, it's awkward, right? I'm going to be standing right there, feeling like I'm in somebody else's backyard. And then I'll find some spots to put those polar green alocasias. Okay, you can't see much, but they're up there. It's going to take them some time to grow. Dug the holes out about three times what I do for most plants, backfilled it. Like I said, I didn't really use much of that soil, the water wise soil. It's just the seasoning. I also popped a polar green colocasia over here. It's so small. You can't even really see it. And I put a Tradescantia in the front. I wanted to make sure to try one of those polar greens up here in this area because this is a cold freaking spot in the garden. If it's hardy to zone five, then it should survive there. Not like Arctic cold, right? I'm zone seven, but that's exposed right there, right? You have a whole area of wall here where that's up against. And it's harder to get things like cannas and bananas and whatnots to do well up here. So I thought that would be a good spot to try it out. It's going to bother me that I don't have one on both sides, but that other side doesn't get enough sun. This side gets way more sun than that side. So figured to give it its best chance, you need to give it proper lighting, right? After looking at the other two, they're more flimsy. Like, look at this. See that? It's not looking, what's going on with this lighting? Why can't you see what I'm talking about here? They're more flimsy. I don't want to plant them just yet. You know, they're not long off the truck. I think I should maybe give them a week or so to reestablish themselves. That's such a weird thing to think about, right? So, okay, well, they're stressed from being on the truck, so I should give them a week or two to recover and then plant them where they're going to need a week or two to recover. So sometimes, like, you just go ahead and do it. I don't know. I think I'm going to hold off just because there's so many gaps to be filled out here. I want to be methodical about where I put them, and I don't want to just plop them anywhere, right? I do think in front of this banana clump that might look good, but I have a ginger that goes there too. So that might not work. I don't think there'll be enough room for them right there. Yeah, it's something to think about. The other thing is I realized that this video is probably already pretty long. So I need to, gotta stop talking and doing things at some point, right? Small dents been made. Look at how beautiful the hibiscus are looking today. Aren't those gorgeous? I love that hibiscus. I can't remember its name. 
This one back here is Mrs. President, First Lady. <laughs> That's what I wasn't wrong. It is Mrs. President, but First Lady. It's a pink like the Seminole, but it has a gentle orange outline on the edges. I wasn't able to show you the flowers on these when I got them because they went out of flower when I filmed that haul video. And who knows if they'll be in flower for the garden tour. So at least getting a look at them while they're open. That's uh, so pretty. I love the flower on this one. That coral rim that goes around everything. It's just beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? It's that time of year where we're all starting to move, get annuals and veggies and things in the ground. You do a lot of seed starting. You're getting your seeds moved out. And thoughts about the heliconias. I said, I think they'll look great there for a period of time, but then the sun's going to shift, and then I don't think they're going to look very good. Whereas the gingers, they'll probably look good all year. I think that that worked out, having a stumbling block where I need to think about it, because it turns out I don't have enough potting soil anyways. I think I might have enough potting soil, maybe, but I don't have enough stuff that I want to amend into it for good drainage and to add some nice, better organics than what's already in that cheap, you know, miracle World stuff. It's not the best soil. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. I'm excited to see the bananas start growing and do their thing. Oh, I need to take the scissors. I forgot. I need to go in there and trim out all the dead stuff from that red banana from last year. And oh, the prime, the hibiscus. Hydrangea. My family does that. My parents, whenever they talk about hydrangeas, they always call them hibiscus and it's starting to rub off on me. I'm excited. Ooh, okay. <laughs> A little bit abrupt. Can't wait to watch it grow, and it's hard. I can't even film it peering right into my neighbor's house. That just seems rude to me. So you get it, though. I might get some size on it and be able to show it to everybody in a better light. Yeah, I'm happy with what got done out here. I think it did as much as I could with the weather and the order of things that things needed to happen. And I hope everybody's doing well. Have a great day, a great life. Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. I don't know if it's going to show on my editing software. It might just be the phone right now but I think I've fried <laughs> my memory things are starting to stutter in the frame rate which means it is definitely time to go as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye